um, what is the prevention for stage C heart failure? So stage C heart failure patients are those with uh, signs and symptoms of heart failure. And therefore, we are going to talk about stage A and B group patients, which are not heart failure patients, but usually at risk for developing heart failure, and those who have structural heart disease, but without signs and symptoms for heart failure. Uh, what are the main characteristics of these individuals? In stage A group, those, the, the, the stage A group uh, covers patients with hypertension, diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, hypercholesterolemia, which are regular risk factors for uh, cardiovascular diseases, and those using cardiotoxins and having family history of cardiomyopathies. And stage B group consists mainly of patients with a previous MI, uh, established left ventricular wall motion abnormalities, systolic or diastolic heart failure, left ventricular enlargement, and those having valvular heart disease. What is the prevention of heart failure stages among different age groups? That topic has been investigated in several large cohort studies like Oldstead County Cohort, ERIC study, and CARDIA study. In young individuals, most of the patients, uh, most of the population uh, is uh, stage A group and around 21% of the whole population aged less than 40 years consists uh, those patients. In uh, middle-aged patients, those aged over 45 years, stage A and B group consist around 60 to 70% of the whole population. And in elderly, uh, stage A and B group are around 80% of the whole population. The characteristics of stage A and B patients are quite similar. Again, in some other uh, cohort studies, uh, the shared characteristics of both groups are the prevalence of hypertension, which is among the highest and also the highest frequency of obesity, followed by diabetes mellitus in stage A group and by myocardial infarction in stage B group. And survival rates of stage A and B patients are actually very similar to a uh, rather healthy group, which means those individuals live a long year or a rather longer life with these risk factors before development of heart failure. Um, the development of heart failure in those having those risk factors, which are hypertension, obesity, and diabetes, has been investigated in, again, four cohort studies. And the uh, total result shows that if, a, if an individual does not have any of these risk factors, namely hypertension, obesity, or diabetes at middle age between 45 to 55 years. They live around 35 years uh, and reach 80 years age easily, which is actually around three to 10 years longer than having uh, one or three of those risk factors. Uh, of course, in cardiology, we rely on uh, some algorithms and we like the risk estimation very much. Uh, this is the result of a pooled cohort equation study that consists of five large groups, including ERIC, CARDIA, Cardiovascular Health Study, Framingham, and multi-ethnic study of atherosclerosis, named the MESA study. And this pool, pool, from this pooled cohort equation, uh, Relying on age, blood pressure, fasting glucose, and body mass index, researchers created a specific uh, equation tool for, the, uh, for predicting the heart failure in the next 10 years time. And this equation was also uh, checked in two other cohorts. And according to the results in high risk individuals, 10 year risk of heart failure is quite high when patients have all those risk factors. Similarly, for group B patients, like those surviving a myocardial infarction but being stable clinically, exactly the same risk factors 
uh, diabetes, history of hypertension, and also history of a previous myocardial infarction uh, increases the risk of developing heart failure. Uh, for those uh, who survive the myocardial infarction, but during the infarction time, uh, the infarction status was complicated by signs of pulmonary congestion or left ventricular effect dysfunction. Again, same risk factors uh, can be seen as the predictors of the future heart failure. So heart failure is uh, frequently uh, said similar to an iceberg. Uh, which is symptomatic patients with class C group, stage C group and stage D group are only the tip of the iceberg and the rest is actually uh, the huge part we are missing. And the best part to prevent development of these symptoms uh, and end-stage heart failure is to screen risky individuals, monitor them serially, manage the risk factors and especially focus on middle-aged individuals having hypertension, obesity, and a history of previous myocardial infarction. And to do it in a holistic and personalized approach. And uh, let's go a little bit to the details. What are the current evidence in terms of management of high blood pressure to prevent heart failure? Uh, hypertension is probably the most important risk factor for development and progression of heart failure, both in patients with uh, and without coronary artery disease. Uh, it starts with the diastolic dysfunction, and uh, the transition consists uh, uh, goes on with uh, several histological changes like fibrosis, microvascular rarefaction, uh, going with uh, preserved ejection fraction heart failure and uh, reduced ejection fr uh, fraction heart failure depending on the hemodynamic status of the patient. Uh, and for nearly four decades, we know that optimal blood pressure control and uh, using some uh, medications can be able to prevent development of heart failure in patients with hypertension. But two topics are still under debate, which is the uh, target blood pressure and which agent to be used to prevent heart failure. This is a, a study, a, a meta-analysis, uh, published some years ago in Lancet. And according to the meta-analysis of the study, Decreasing the systolic blood pressure below 130 millimeter of mercury is uh, significantly associated with less uh, development of heart failure. And also diuretics may be a little bit more advantageous compared to other medications. But uh, after on, and also with the impact of the SPRINT trial, the uh, guidelines published uh, within the last four years all targeted a blood pressure uh, less than 130 over 80 millimeter of mercury except for nine guidelines which still target a blood pressure level of uh, less than 140 and over 90 millimeter of mercury and all of those uh, recent guidelines uh, take all medications, initial medications, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, calcium channel blockers, and diuretics equal to each other. Uh, still, the debate continues, and in this large study, uh, which, uh, uh, it is, which is a meta-analysis, investigated the effect of intensive blood pressure lowering uh, and its effect on heart failure, the researchers showed that targeting a decreased blood pressure, which is uh, lower blood pressure, which is less than 120 millimeter of mercury systolic blood pressure, uh, it may be better than uh, targeting a higher level. Uh, and compared to higher level blood pressures, uh, 120 millimeter mercury appeared better in terms of decreasing the uh, onset of heart failure. Uh, and also, uh, a latest study, which has been uh, presented in the latest ESC Congress, uh, the researchers analyzed 
very large data, blood pressure, uh, lowering trials, uh, collaboration. And again, a target blood pressure less than 120 millimeter of mercury was associated with less uh, with, uh, development of heart failure compared to other blood pressure targets. And especially the effect was more marked for uh, decreasing the risk of heart failure. What about the choice of the agent? Uh, according to another comprehensive framework, uh, which consists of real life data, including roughly 5 million. Uh, doctor, please open your, yeah, we can hear you now. Okay. Uh, okay. In uh, this very large group of uh, real life patients consisting of 5 million in, uh, patients, Pfizer group diuretics appeared to be more beneficial compared to other agents, including renin and angiotensin uh, blockers and non dehydropyridine group calcium channel blockers. And uh, actually, non dehydropyridine group calcium channel blockers performed worse compared to other agents in decreasing the risk of heart failure development. Uh, Okay, what about the current evidence about obesity and diabetes management and prevention of heart failure? As we all know, uh, obesity is uh, progressively incre increasing uh, and contributing to a significant proportion of deaths in, among the, uh, around the world. And same uh, tendency is also observed in Turkey. Obesity is a significant risk factor and independent risk factor for development of heart failure. And uh, while many mechanisms, not only by diabetes, etc., and also associated coronary artery, uh, artery disease, may, but maybe also directly, it may lead to the development of heart failure. Uh, how to manage the lifestyle of patients uh, and uh, what should be uh, suggested, recommended for those having low or uh, preserved ejection fraction. Uh, actually, the lifestyle recommendations are quite similar to each other, uh, like uh, changing the quality of diet, cal caloric restriction, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but when it comes to the pharmacological agents, none of them have been able to be beneficial in decreasing the risk of heart failure initiation. But that is not true for the bariatric surgery. Interestingly, bariatric surgery have been consistently shown to decrease the risk of heart failure, onset of heart failure, uh, and the benefit ranges between 10 to 60% among various studies. So, that gives the impression that bariatric surgery should more frequently be proposed to obese individuals uh, to prevent development of heart failure. What about diabetes? Of course, when we mention uh, about pre prevention of heart failure, we can never forget diabetes, especially uh, after the uh, launch of the recent trials, but this topic will be covered by uh, Birhan Yilmaz uh, later on. So uh, just briefly, we know that diabetes is a significant contributor of new onset heart failure, both in patients with renal disease, atrial fibrillation, established cardiovascular diseases and so, and for uh, HFREF and HFPEF, it doubles the risk of development of heart failure. Uh, the relation between the hemoglobin A1c and development of heart failure is not linear, but like, uh, rather uh, J-shaped. And not only the mm, absolute value of hemoglobin A1c level, but also its change during lifetime also may predict the development of heart failure and that it increasing during uh, the uh, following years, it's a significant predictor of development of heart failure.
The relation between diabetes and development of heart failure is rather complicated, not only coronary artery disease and presence of ischemic heart disease, but also hyperglycemia and fatty acid contribute to the development of heart failure, leading to increased oxidative stress, DNA damage, extracellular fibrosis, microvascular damage, and so on. Uh, in the latest guidelines on diabetes, renin angiotensin system blockers are recommended as class one agents for control of blood pressure, and uh, LDL targets are also significantly defined uh, for diabetic individuals. And a uh, little bit different than the previous guidelines, aspirin is also recommended in selected group of patients with diabetes. But the topic uh, of discussion continues about the anti-diabetic drugs. Uh, in the recent years, two groups of agents emerged as the best agents for uh, oral antidiabetics in diabetic individuals, which includes uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists and SGLT-2 inhibitors. When we uh, review the data of uh, glucagon-like peptide on the receptor agonists, uh, we see that none of the trials are actually very beneficial in terms of uh, decreasing the risk of heart failure, and usually they remain neutral uh, when we discuss uh, uh, prevention of heart failure in those individuals. But sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitors are quite different. They block the sodium glucose co-transporter 2 in the proximal tubule and also uh, do some nitrogenesis and uh, uricose, uh, urico, uh, urico, uh, uh, uricolysis effect. And uh, they have very uh, different beneficial effects in cardiovascular system and metabolic system. And they have consistently shown to decrease hospitalization for heart failure, both in patients with and without established cardiovascular disease. And so they've become a, a very, very interesting and important uh, agents for preventing development of heart failure in stage A and B group, B group patients. Uh, briefly discussing of uh, patients uh, surviving the myocardial infarction and how to prevent development of uh, heart failure, surely the remodeling is a very important uh, concept in the development of heart failure in patients with a history of previous myocardial infarction. Adverse remodeling in MI cerebrus is significantly associated with uh, the decrease in the left ventricular uh, ejection fraction and extent of the fibrosis. And also biomarkers showing the hemodynamical status of the patients are very important markers for predicting the risk for development of heart failure. In patients surviving the myocardial infarction, established managements or uh, treatment strategies include timely and accurate uh, revascularization, usage of renin angiotensin system blockers, beta blockers, and mineral corticoid receptor antagonists in selected group of patients. What about dyslipidemia management in those individuals? Interestingly, statins have not been shown to exert beneficial effects in those with already established heart failure, but they've been able to decrease the prevention, the development of heart failure, mainly by decreasing the development of myocardial infarction. Uh, and for uh, the recent agents that uh, have uh, that we've seen uh, the results like ecosapentyl and so on, anti-triglyceridemia management, those agents become rather neutral in decreasing the risk of heart failure. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, to prevent heart failure in stage. A and B group of patients. For stage A, we have uh, the evidence, current evidence shows that targeting a blood pressure less than 130 over 80 millimeter of mercury and using diuretics and renin angiotensin system blockers, weight loss, especially in selected patients with bariatric surgery, usage of SGLT2 inhibitors and statins are effective in decreasing the risk of heart failure development. For stage B, uh, the same measurements are still accurate, 
but also usage of beta blockers and mineral corticoid receptor blockers may be helpful in decreasing the risk of heart failure. Surely, uh, this is not a this, should, this only can be accomplished by an accurate teamwork and rehabilitation features. Uh, I, we, I risky individuals should be identified, screened, uh, the lifestyle modification and risk factor management should be performed intensively. Uh, research should of course go on and also should a little bit focus on elderly women and carriers of some genetic mutations. And of course, public awareness is also the main measurement for increasing the patient adherence. Okay, thank you for your attention.